Hi, it's Kevin and Lisa here again. We just want to let you know a little of how the whole house buying process works, so when you are at that stage, there will be no surprises. The first and most important thing to think about is getting your finances in place. The chances are, once you find the home that you like, you'll have to act quickly to secure it. Every listing agent will require a pre-approval letter to be submitted with any offer to show that you're financially qualified to buy the home. We work very closely with Town Mortgage and if you don't already have your financing in place, we'll be happy to get Jim or Joanna to contact you to discuss it. Here's Jim to briefly explain the process. Hi, so Kevin and Lisa have asked me to spend a couple seconds with you talking about the pre-approval process. It's very simple. Um, what will happen is you will meet with me, we'll go over your income, your assets, and your credit. For income, I want to see your pay stubs, your W-2s, and your tax returns from the last two years. Your bank statements will tell me what you have with, for assets to close with, and we'll pull your credit while you're here and look that over and make sure you're ready to go so you can get a mortgage and buy that house. If you will be paying cash, you will need to provide proof of funds to the seller. We will be happy to discuss this with you in detail. Before you submit an offer, you will need to sign an agency agreement with us. So we are formally representing you and putting your interest first in any negotiations. When it comes to submitting the offer, we will go through the offer documentation in detail, but there are a couple of th things that is important you know beforehand. For first time buyers, those new to the area, or those who haven't bought a home for some time, this is particularly important. Up to a few years ago, we had a contract that had developed over time. There were two main dates. The contract date, when both sides had agreed and signed, and a few weeks later was the closing date, when the seller handed the keys to the buyer. Between the two dates were several other milestones with conditions attached that had to be met. The inspection clauses, mortgage clauses, appraisal clauses, insurance clauses, the list went on. This led to disagreement, arguments and ill feeling. In 2011, the North Carolina Real Estate Commission introduced a new contract. This contract has three important dates. The contract and closing dates as before, but now there is the due diligence date somewhere between the two. All the get out clauses have gone away. It is now simple. Before the expiration of the due diligence period, the buyer can walk away from the contract for any or no reason. Yes, you heard right. They don't have to give any reason for walking away. A buyer can walk away between the expiration of due diligence to the time of closing, but they then forfeit their earnest money deposit. We'll talk more about that later. So, by the end of the due diligence period, the buyer needs to be sure they want to buy the home. They need to have all the inspections done and any repairs negotiated. They need to get their mortgage in place, including having the home appraised, and they need to make sure they can get insurance. This all sounds great for the buyer, but of course nothing in life is free. The buyer needs to pay for the privilege of having the ability to walk away for any or no reason. We call this payment the due diligence fee. We briefly mentioned the earnest money deposit, and we've just talked about the due diligence fee. So how does that work, and how much does it cost? This is a great question, and for one for which there is no simple answer. Firstly, let's make it clear that both are credited to the buyer at closing. They are only at the risk if the buyer does not get to closing. Both are payable at the contract date, i.e. right at the beginning of the process, and are normally paid by personal cheque, which will be deposited. As to how much each cheque will be for, that's a question that's impossible to answer here. A higher due diligence fee, and to a lesser extent earnest money deposit, makes for a stronger offer, because the buyer has more to lose should they walk away. This is particularly important in a competitive market with multiple offers. As a ballpark figure, you're probably looking at 1-2% to of the purchase price being the combined cost of due diligence and earnest money. How this is split depends upon the particular situation at the time of the offer. So, by the time it gets to the end of the due diligence period, the buyer has the due diligence fee on the line, but they also have paid for home inspections, termite inspections, radar inspections, loan origination fees, appraisal fees, and maybe more. So in reality, they have quite a lot to lose should they walk away for any or no reason. We will talk in more detail in our next video about inspections, surveys, mortgages, and closing. If, you're, if you have any questions in the meantime, please do not hesitate to contact us.